Hi everyone, welcome back to the Model Railroad Back Shop. I'm your host, Roger Kajawa. I'm here today to show you some cool steel mill loads for your flat cars that I alluded to in the first episode. But first, let me take you a tour on the Illinois Junction Railroad. Illinois Junction is the interchange with Illinois Steel in the outside world. Quite a bit of action happens here. There's limestone coming in, scrap coming in, there's coke coming in, coil steel going out. I have two blast furnaces and a blower building, although I don't model the internal works of the steel mill. Illinois Junction uh, serves the interchange in this yard here which I call Calumet Yard. Farther down here is some more inner workings. This area here is where the cars actually go through the backdrop and into my bathroom. These other buildings here are false front buildings that have cars in them. I bought these buildings off eBay and we're gonna eventually re-letter them but I thought it was kind of cool to have the old uh, Herald still up. This is the action we're kind of getting into today. This is where the cranes deliver the plate steel. These are the loads we're going to make today. They are removable. I build all my loads removable, so you can take them off, set them on any car. We'll get more into that later. I'll take you a little trip around to the hidden world of my hidden yard in the bathroom. Not much to see, but there are a few tracks. It sits kind of behind the furnace a little bit, but it gives me a lot of extra storage. The Illinois Junction has two locomotives and two slugs that service the industries here and switch this yard. This main interchange is with my Atlantic and Great Western. This actually was built as an afterthought. I had these tracks looping around here, these three main lines that go through the backdrop and through the bathroom to make a reverse loop. And I had this space, didn't know what to do with it, and the afterthought turned out pretty good. So let's get to the loads. We're back at the workbench. The main product we're gonna use for this video to make the steel loads is Plastruct ABS. These are two foot long strips. They come five in a package. You can make a lot of loads out of these. What's really cool about these is they're pre-colored. There's a dark gray and a light gray, so you don't have to paint them. The next thing I picked up is some scale lumber. You can get this at most hobby shops. Midwest is the company that makes it. I have also found a bag of ties at a swap meet for three bucks. This kind of stuff and the lumber here works great for cribbing or blocking. Um, we'll show you that later. I pre-marked this Plastruct and it's really easy to cut you just give it a stribe. You don't even have to go all the way through. And you just snap it. So you can cut it off as many lengths as you want. And it's ready to go. Now I've gone ahead and pre-built part of this load. I got the three levels. I was going to do four. That seems to be enough. Gives you the illusion of a heavy steel load. And... You can make them longer or shorter as you want. Uh, I like the way they're haphazardly sticking in and out. There's no reason to load them up perfect in real life because they're going somewhere to be made into something else anyway. So I uh, did a video on using this kid's school glue. I like this a lot for attacking parts down. It gives you some flexibility in the drying time 
And although it's purple, it dries clear. So if you get a chance, go ahead and look at my first video about uh, all the applications for this uh, school glue. This is another, uh, the cribbing on here, or blocking. It doesn't have to be perfect, because there's just going to be a couple guys, or maybe a guy with a little crane that's tossing these up there just to hold them apart. So I just get a little bit on here, and kind of stick it down. over the top of the other ones. And we can clean up what squeezes out there, but you wouldn't see it once you get the other layer on anyway. You can see how quick this goes together. Once it's pre-cut, all the lumbers, you put one of these together pretty quick. Now for the top, you can just clean this off. This is one of the most handy knife blades I have. It's a X-Acto number 17 chisel blade. I probably use this more than I use the standard knife blade. Remember, this stuff dries clear, so you're not going to see that purple once it dries. So I'll take my knife blade here and I'll put a little bit on top of these ties. I'm not sure where the idea came up with this or this glue. I just happened upon it. Your kids probably have it around the house, and I probably needed something, and this was handy, and all of a sudden, I'm using it a lot. Uh, in the first one, I used it quite a bit to show you how to stick figures on locomotives. You can see how much you get a little working time on this. Okay, our stack's ready to go. You could see how quick you could do this uh, during a baseball game. You could put these together uh, while the guys are changing innings or their uh, commercials on or halftime. For our next step in the load, we're going to apply the banding. I have two kinds of tape, plain old invisible tape and plain electrician's tape. The first thing I do is cut off a piece after I lay the electrician's tape down. It's hard to get it perfectly straight, so I lay it down and I cut a piece off. And then I'll take this piece and use it to measure around the load. Now when you cut this really thin, it'll stretch on you. So you can see that how close that is to the edge. So I'll use that as a guide on my tape. And I'll cut this a little bit shorter. And get rid of that piece. That way you don't have a big long tail of tape stringing out when you're trying to pick this up because it's it's like th almost like thread once you cut it. Now after a while, and it doesn't take long, you'll get to develop what looks right for about a two or three inch band and you can pretty much keep it even. And you just, a nice firm scribe line down there will cut that tape and I just use the knife to pick it up and I grab it with both hands so it doesn't curl up on you. And I stick it on the end, wrap it around, 
try to keep it somewhat straight. You can see how much already that stretched. So I'll trim that off. Now to hold that in place, I'll grab a small piece of this clear tape. And I'll show you that again. It's pretty easy. And it, it, it looks pretty uniform once you get it done. They may not be exact. Just a firm stroke, cut right through that electrician's tape. Pick it up with the knife and both fingers. And we'll put a band around each one. I found when you cut this tape really thin, it doesn't seem to stick by its own. And that's why I used the clear tape. Again, you can see how much that stretches. Another piece of clear tape. And we're well on our way to having this done. Okay, we'll do one more. And through the magic of editing, this will be the last one. Like I said, this is all done just by eye. Just You just look down the ruler, look straight. One firm cut. Pick it up with the knife. Trim off our little bit of stretch. Grab a piece of clear tape to cover up the joints and help hold that on there. There we go. Pretty cool, almost ready to go. Now I'll show you the next step. It's outside. That wasn't pretty outside, was it? <laughs> I didn't realize the wind was blowing so much. Anyway, uh, I just clear-coated the load with uh, Rust-Oleum Matte Clear. You can get any kind of brand. I just picked this up at Walmart, but any hardware store, you get a matte finish. Uh, what that does is two things. It takes the shine off the plastic, and it gives you a base for a little bit of weathering. Now, these are brand new steel loads. But sometimes the steel will sit out in the yard for a while and it'll get a little bit of rust on it. And the one weathering technique I really like is pan pastels. It's very similar to probably eyeshadow or makeup. Um, I wouldn't doubt that these are probably somebody's, somebody has makeup in these little tins. But it's got a base on it that really makes it stick, and it's my new favorite for weathering. So just any old brush, a little bit of weathering on the edges, maybe where it was cut. Maybe where it went through the machine. Like I said, you don't want to overdo this, but I think it adds that little tiny bit of color that kind of sets these off. And this just kind of drags some across real lightly. And you can experiment some different colors.
Like I said, you don't want to go too far. But I think, and kind of wipe some of it off with your fingers. But I think that really sets it off. A little bit of rust on there. Again, that's pan pastels. You can get those at most hobby shops. I think Micromart has them too. This next step, I think it adds even more interest to the load. I made up these little signs. They're just on regular typing paper. Typing paper. <laughs> that You can tell I'm old. Any <laughs> copy paper. So um, I just pulled in the... U.S. Steel logo into Word, shrunk it down, typed out United States Steel, put it in a text box, and there you go. So I'm um, back to the school glue. This is uh, in part one of my first video. I showed how to use this for various things, and this is one of the techniques. And I put some school glue on there and just stick it in one corner like they're proud of their load. And then put a couple like on the side so that probably wouldn't see this as much today as you would back in the day. But I think it adds a lot of interest to your load. And remember that school glue dries clear so this purple will completely go away if any of it st sticks out. Oop, almost messed that one up. There, that's pretty cool. So now we need to load this on our flat car. I like removable loads. Now, the problem is, as the train goes, it's going to vibrate right off the car. So, how do we fix that? What I've done is taken toothpicks, drilled a couple holes in the car. These stake pockets can be real flimsy. So I go with a really small pilot hole. You want to take it slow too because the speed of the drill can melt the plastic. And when you drill through, now careful not to, to drill too fast. But when you're drilling, don't drill straight down. You don't want to hit the paint. You want to drill in at just a slight angle so when your drill comes through, it won't hit the paint. So, got this other drill with just a little bit bigger bit. Now that we have the pilot hole drill, we can take a little bit more out of that hole. Once I have the holes drilled, get some regular toothpicks. These are kind of a rectangle shape, but still pointed. I'll stick it in the stake pocket, and I'll trim off the bottom. Then I'll dip it in a little drop of super glue. Just get a little bit on the end. Stick it in the hole, and then trim the top off. Four of them seems to do it on these jobs. That's all you need.
I hope you enjoyed this edition of Model Railroad Back Shop. Check us out on Facebook or YouTube, and you can see my railroad, the Atlantic Great Western, on Facebook. Thanks for watching.